What do you guys think about plus minus as a stat? Honestly? Honestly. I think there is some merit to it. Do I think it's an overall way to evaluate players? Probably not, but there has to be some merit to it because you are on the ice when you get goal scored. Now, if you're a minus four or five, hey, buddy, you just stepped on the ice and they scored. HK. There, are, there are a few of those that happened without question. You had nothing to do with the play. Your feet were just happened to be on the ice. Not your fault. But that's when you're minus four or five. And I'll let it go. Okay. Well, I've been told that Connor Bedard's plus minus doesn't matter. And by and large, I agree with this. But, you know, Connor Bedard's plus minus doesn't matter. We've heard this argument floated by on our own show, actually, yep. by respected media, media members such as The Athletic's Mark Lazarus and by media members of questionable characters such as our own Pete Blackburn. <laughs> Are their arguments valid or just superficial punditry lacking deeper analysis? Well, Let's, let's dive into this. Let's start with some historical context. The record for a Calder Trophy winner is Gilbert Perrault, minus 38 in 1970-71. That's the worst recorded plus-minus among Calder winners. Bedard is currently minus 39, on pace to set the record. The next closest rookie among the top 10 rookie scorers this year is Luke Hughes at minus 18. So less than half, right? The pro-Bedard argument goes like this. Connor Bedard plays on an historically bad team, an AHL caliber team. He has no players around him, so it's not fair to measure him with a stat as awful as plus minus. I agree, plus minus is an awful stat. It's almost, I almost never cite it. It's a team centric and stat that lacks nuance. The only time I do cite it, when it's extreme. Yeah. When a plus minus gets this far out of whack, it means there's more at play than just team play. So let's dive a little deeper. If the Blackhawks are as bad as the pundits tell us, then Bedard should have plenty of company on his own roster, right? Plus yeah. minus. In fact, only line mate Philip Khrushchev has a worse plus minus than Connor Bedard by one at minus 40. Bedard has been as big of a liability defensively as anybody on this team. Now, it's fair to say he faces tough matchups. That's right. He's going to face tougher matchups. There's some explanation for that figure, but does not excuse his abjectly bad defensive play, or this glaring stat. I went a little deeper than this. I searched through history to find that there was only one Calder Trophy winner in the past 50 years who's had a plus-minus of worse than minus 20. Not minus 39. Didn't even reach minus 20. His name was Mario Lemieux. <laughs> 1984-85. And like Bedard, he played on an abjectly bad Pittsburgh Penguins team that finished with 53 points yep. in 80 games and had a negative 109 goal differential. Like Bedard, Lemieux regularly faced tough matchups. The Blackhawks have 47 points, by the way, with nine games to play and a negative 99 goal differential. So if the, badly, the abjectly bad team argument is to be believed, shouldn't there be more Calder Trophy winners in Bedard's company? Let's check history. 1995-96 Calder Trophy winner Daniel Alfredson played on an abjectly bad Ottawa Senators club that finished dead last in the NHL with 41 points, six fewer than the Blackhawks have now. That team had a negative 100 goal differential. Al Alfredson also logged heavy minutes in a tough role. He finished minus 18. 2000-2001 Calder Trophy winner Danny Eatley played on an abjectly bad Atlanta Thrashers club that finished dead last in the NHL with 53 points and a minus 101 goal differential. Heatley logged heavy minutes, played in a tough role, finished minus 19. Okay? Got another one for you. 2012-13 Calder Trophy winner Jonathan Huberdo played on an abjectly bad Florida Panthers team that finished dead last in the NHL with 36 points in a lockout shortened season. Minus 59 goal differential. Huberdo logged good minutes, maybe not as much as the two guys I mentioned, but still in a tough role, finished minus 15. There are other examples. I could keep going here, but I think you get the point. Playing on a bad team with tough matchups absolutely factors into plus minus. But when the minus is extreme as Connor Bedard's, those factors do not fully excuse just how bad he's been defensively. Bedard is, in all likelihood, going to set the record for an extreme example of the worst plus minus in Calder Trophy winner history. History shows us, however, that his situation with the Blackhawks is not as extreme as his stat. This could and should, in my opinion, Come into play when voters are deciding whether to vote for Bedard or Minnesota Wild defenseman Brock Faber, who is logging heavier minutes, playing a tougher role as a top pair defenseman, and somehow leading all top rookies not named Bedard um, in points per game. He's locking it down defensively. He's got a plus six rating on a non-playoff team with a minus five goal differential. Calder Trophy voters have to be careful not to let the hype 
and Bedard's otherworldly offensive talents overshadow their objectivity. Wow. That was that was a well-presented argument, Craig. Thank you. That's impressive. So, I'll be using it when I vote. That's impressive. And, and you know what's, what's interesting to me? Because I, here, here, here's... Th- I, what I did not know because I did not do the research, thank God you did, is is the comparables to other shitty teams yep. because that's important because this team is really bad and they're going to finish poor in the standings. You know, their goal differential is going to be incredibly lopsided. But there were several examples of that exact same thing happening to really bad teams. And we hear Mario Lemieux and Pittsburgh, but hey, Pittsburgh sucked. Yeah, they were like horrific. Pittsburgh and the Coyotes were were side by each when Sidney Crosby was drafted as the worst two teams in the league. It's just one got Sidney Crosby and one didn't. Um, and, and you can figure out who that is. If, if you if you look it up, um, <laughs> but, but but that's interesting to me that that, that it's that poor. So here's what's gonna, what I'm curious about is not Connor Bedard this year. He's gonna. I I agree, Craig. I I think Brock Faber needs to at least be recognized and noticed that yep. he's what he's doing in Minnesota. He'll be a finalist. And, and, and you look at what Connor Bedard is doing. What you need to watch with Connor Bedard is what happens next year. And what happens the year after that? Because you start to get these habits where if it doesn't matter if you defend and it doesn't matter how you play in your own end, it's it's difficult to turn that bus around because, oh, I'm here for my offense. That's why I'm here. I'm here to score goals. The hell with the other side of it. And, and I won't call names out because I've watched a lot of film on a lot of players over the last 30 years. And there are those players that we would laugh at how poorly they defended unbelievable offensive players in this league like some of the top Eric stars Carlson. in this <laughs> you mentioned him a few times and, and their inability to defend is comical like it's so bad that you would want those players on the ice and you're thinking you wouldn't want player x on the ice he's one of the leading scorers in the league yeah we want him on the ice because he can't defend and i'm wondering where bedard sits with with this franchise that it's it's not just it's okay to lose like, it's okay to lose. And I get it. There's been so many teams there. Kyrie's have been there. Edmonton's been there. It's okay to lose. But you can't lose year after year after year after year and then have a superstar on that team losing year after year after year and expect him to have good habits. You can't. It's not going to happen. So this year, they'll get away with it. He's going to be a minus 50, and they'll be a 100 minus 50. 150 goal differential and they'll be last and he'll win the award and you'll go oh how great he was but let's see where he is in two years and maybe i'm completely wrong if they get macklin celebrini this year and the two of them are playing together then then all bets are off and maybe they start drafting defensemen and defensive forwards but wait to see where this goes in the future craig wait wait to see what these habits that he's getting today where watch him play in the defensive zone watch Connor bedard you know where he plays top of the blue line He's looking to pick off that pass, D to D pass, because he wants to go the other way. He's not low in the zone. He's not top of the circle. He's not in the corners digging it out. He's at the top of his zone cheating, waiting for that opportunity to get that turnover up top. That's where he plays. And if you think I'm lying, go watch it. So are those habits going to bleed through year after year? Only time will tell. And maybe not. I mean, mm-hmm. He's an unbelievably talented kid. Maybe not. Maybe the defensive side will become more important as he continues to play. But, but that's very interesting research, and I appreciate you spending the time. Very interesting perspective. And while you were talking, I looked at BetMGM to see what the Calder Trophy odds were right now. Is it overwhelming? There's only odds for two players, and I checked another sports book, and it's also only these two players. Connor Bedard and Brock Faber are currently the only two with Calder odds. Brock Faber plus 1,100. Connor Bedard minus 2,500. It's preordained. Yeah. We're not even going to look at that. We're not even going to yeah. consider counter arguments. Yeah. This, this bothers me about the voting populace a lot yeah. not not the american voting populace i have other issues with them <laughs> the, uh yeah the people who the vote, vote on, NHL, on awards. NHL i don't awards. think they do this sort of research of course not. it's just it's it's narratives oh that's ridiculous he plays on a te- terrible team which is it's all true but you need to dive so deeper if craig, you're gonna have the responsibility of voting so you what and, and i i'm naive and i'm not i'm sincerely asking i don't know the, the answer to this who votes on the the calder is it the members of the media that yep. vote on that yep. particular award what other awards did the media vote on uh, a lot of different awards depending on I, yeah, I'll, I'll vote on the Selkie. Vote on the Heart. We'll vote on the Visit. Who does uh, coaches? Nor- Coach uh, there, Jack Adams. Yeah, Who you yeah. vote Jack Adams. Yeah. Okay. So and so here's 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 what I challenge to the people that are do, that are doing this. You can't. It's hard to objectively look at all of these different players when you don't see them play. And 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 I I, I know that that's what we talk about the the bias the East Coast bias because you see the Rangers and the Bruins and the that's what you see. In Toronto, mm-hmm. you don't see the LA Kings. You don't see Nashville. You don't see 
you know, the teams in the West. You don't see Seattle, Edmonton, Calgary, Vancouver. You don't see Vancouver. I don't know why. I mean, the last time I saw Vancouver Canucks play. But well, they're one of the teams competing for the... I, I tell you, I've seen the Rangers and the Bruins. Yeah. So people saw... You, you know what What team in the bottom five had their team on the most national television this year? <laughs> yeah, the Blackhawks. Chicago Blackhawks. Wasn't even close. Because of him. Wasn't even close. He was on ESPN's opening night. Connor Bedard. Well, Minnesota Wild is not on ESPN. They're not on TNT. You're not getting that national recognition of a Brock Faber. You were seeing Connor Bedard all the time. So I, I, I don't know if these voters have had the opportunity to really see what kind of a player Brock Faber is, and I think you need to see him. So impressive. He's, he's We've unbelievable. We've seen him live. And unbelievable. He is so the kid impressive. is unreal. And I, I again, I like... I I might be more impressed with his defense than his yeah. offense. And he's oh, got for 40, sure. Like he's got forty points as a defenseman. Yeah. He's second in rookie scoring as a defenseman. Yeah, but his defense is so mature. Yep, he's a really good player. 